Okay. I'm a little bit nervous, y'all probably tell, but we'll work that out in a few minutes. Um, sometimes when I feel the Holy Spirit, when I'm talking in my relationship with the Lord, I get this weird thing. It's a physical sign in my body. It's, uh, it's where these salty water starts leaking out of my eyes. So y'all just don't worry about that either, all right? Now let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for the people who came to, to see a testimony to what the power of of your word can do, ask that you'll get me out of the way, I'll be minimized and you'll be maximized, so that somebody can see the light of Jesus in me today. Amen. Amen. Um, start off, most of y'all know me, I grew up right here in this church, sitting right over there. Um, to save a lot of details around my teenage years, I got involved in drugs and alcohol, I wasted 20 years doing that, um, living, chasing sin, trying to fill a hole that I didn't even know I uh, was missing, honestly. Uh, January of 2022, I went to a uh, Greater Piedmont Adult and Teen Challenge in Greensboro. It's a discipleship program. It's not just a recovery program. They teach you, you know, you end up learning like 160 verses. You do daily devotions. You have different uh, study times. We go to church like 14 times a week. Uh, with that being said, 14 times a week, you know, you're bound to kind of hear the same messages sometimes. And when I first started accepting that I wanted to change my life and I was going to rededicate to living for the Lord, one of the things I prayed for and I always thought was cool when speakers would come, it's like, how do they, they understand the Bible like that? You know, for so long, it was just a book for me. The words didn't, it wasn't a living word because I hadn't given my heart to the Lord. Uh, as I prayed about those things and I always thought, you know, one day maybe I can go to enough classes or go to enough school that when I read the Bible, I can get a message other than just words on a page. Uh, this message that I'm going to do, uh, I've heard it a couple different ways, but it was the first one that it kind of put me in tears one morning doing my devotions because it's like, all right, it, it just happened. That thing you've been praying for, you know, you want to understand the Bible. Well, there you go. He gave me a little taste. And uh, with that being said, that's important to me. And then I've been blessed to share my testimony in about a dozen churches in the Greensboro area. Um, and I've shared a message with the guys in the program, but I've never shared a message in a church. So me growing up in this church is special to me and will be in my future testimony that this happened here. So uh, that's pretty much it for the, the testimony. I want to let the Lord shine on what I'm doing now, not what I used to do. So today uh, we're going to go to Mark 10, 46 through 52. Now they came to Jericho. <laughs> As he went out of Jericho and his disciples, disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose, came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabbi, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go on your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. For a long time, I just looked at that as a miracle of a blind man being healed. Until I really sat down with the Lord and asked the Holy Spirit to, to get me deeper into the word. And that's when it started revealing so much more out of that one little scripture. To give you a little bit of backstory, just before this, James and John, uh, you know, they asked, they tell Jesus, you know, we want you to do, we want you to do whatever you want, we want. And they wanted to sit at the right and left hand of the Lord. And he said, you don't even know what you're asking and it's not mine to give. And that leads up, that's just a little backstory. What stuck out to me in that is, what do you want me to do for you? And it'll come back again later. Whew. Man. All right, so now we're going back to, to blind Bartimaeus. And to start this off, he calls out, Jesus, have mercy on me. Right then, it's showing, it's not everybody telling him around that Jesus is around. He can feel the presence. He knows Jesus is in the area. And his first instinct is to cry out for Jesus. That's his first instinct. I will say instinct. I don't know better words. 
But um, so then others try to silence them, and it got me thinking like all the all the ways that I was trying to silence when I was looking for that help. I didn't know where to turn. And then when I would try to think about maybe going to God, the enemy would come up and distract me with with friends that I thought were friends or, you know, going to this, jobs. You know, you get a, a decent job making decent money, you think, all right, that whole speed of my life's better now. And you quickly go right back into the same thing. And that's kind of what I looked at when they were when they were trying to quiet him. But then he calls out again, Jesus, have mercy on me. And that, that spoke to me that just because he didn't receive healing in his first cry, he didn't give up. He held on to that faith, and he cried out for him again. you got to imagine, you know, he's blind, so he doesn't know Jesus has stopped. He doesn't know what's coming. <sighs> Sorry, y'all. After he cried out, the second time is when Jesus commanded for him to come near. And this is where I really started recognizing that every, every word in this book is important. I felt, I felt the Holy Spirit telling me, like, you know, he threw aside his garment. And, and the first couple times I read it, like, that really didn't mean much to me. Okay, put it down and go. But then I started reading more and praying more about this. I realized it said he cast aside his garment. And I get to thinking, you know, as a beggar, he's wrapped up with his garment. That garment is his identity. Whether it's addiction, whether it's, you know, codependency, whether it's longing for relationship, that cloak is how he's been identified his whole life. When people saw that cloak, they knew he was a beggar. That was his identity. That was his comfort zone. That was his security. But when he, when he got the command from Jesus, he cast it aside. He didn't take it off and set it down to come back. He didn't, you know, have somebody watch over it. It says he cast it aside. He threw it away. That's gone. That old identity is gone. <clears throat> and I really got tied up focusing on the garment part for a little while. And how not only was it his comfort zone and his identity, but it was really all he had. You know, he didn't have a home. He didn't have, you think of beggars at that time, and it's just... That was his everything. But with the command to follow Jesus, him having the faith in Jesus, he knew getting rid of that coat would be the best thing he ever did. And I thank God for getting rid of coats. And then it, I started thinking about it more and more. And it, that phrase kept coming up, what do you want me to do for you? He knew what he wanted. He knew exactly what he needed. And out of all the things in the world, can you imagine the God that created the universe, the God that made everything, is giving you, one single person, all of his attention and asking, what do you want? That's amazing. So I started thinking more about what I wanted and what I wanted. And this is it. Being able to tell people, what Jesus can do, what he will do, being able, especially faces that knew me in my past, you know, a lot of y'all from me faces knew I was, uh, I never would have seen myself doing this. But when I was given the opportunity, I decided to throw that coat away and follow Jesus. So, I guess I just want to ask y'all today, what can God do for you? I hope you think about that and and carry it with you. Ultimately, yes, we're called to follow Christ. You know, the great commission, leading others to Christ. But what is it you want God to do for you? What cloaks do you need him to remove in your life? He will, that's right. Uh, I had a little more, but it's more of just continuing on over the same thing. So really, that's, that's kind of where I'm at with it. Um, I'm honored that y'all would have me here today to do this. Appreciate it, Brother Stan. Everybody that's been coming here praying for me. Thanks for being here. I remember a lot of days coming home and seeing the bulletin on the table.
And my name was always on the prayer list. Y'all never gave up. Yes, sir. So I just want to encouragement mainly. Um, I know it's not the best sermon, but my goal is not to give the best sermon. My goal is to show what Jesus can do in somebody's life. Uh, I want to thank y'all. Uh, and I want to leave you with my favorite verse. Uh, Philippians 4, 6, and 8. Be anxious for nothing but in everything with prayer and supplication. Let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And peace. Peace is when I knew that I was following the Lord. When I woke up and didn't dread what the day had to bring and knew that I wanted better things out of life and wanted to help others, that's when I knew that I was doing exactly like I was supposed to do, following the Lord and leaving that old coat behind. I want to thank y'all. Sir? I appreciate it. If anybody wants to help with anything, I'm not here to to ask for money or or to do that kind of route. But there's a there's a place in Greensboro called Greater Piedmont Adult and Teen Challenge. It is saving men's lives every day. If uh, if you're ever looking for a way to help or just want to do something, it's a good organization to start with. Thank y'all. Thank you. So I'll bow our heads. Ooh, I'm kind of loud, Jimmy. All right. I want you to pray together with me the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I think enough's been said today. I wouldn't add to that not one dot. But all I ask you this morning, if the Lord has touched your heart, we know that God will meet all our needs. You just prayed the Lord's Prayer. He meets your needs. There's no reason, no reason to worry. He help you find a place of rest and help you find a place of peace. He'll refresh you. He'll replenish you when you're drained, when you feel like you're at the bottom of the pit. And that's what this message was this morning, was the Lord's Prayer showing us all the things, even our dark days, even our fearful days, God is always with us. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. But most of all, when you don't have any support at all, he will support you. Uh, I've always said that God walks in front of me. I walk behind him. He leads the way, and if I want to take a right, he takes a right first. If I want to take a left, he takes a left first. If I want to turn around and go backwards, I'm going to bump into him. Because he's all around me. He's going to protect me and he's going to keep me safe. But most of all, he's going to support me. Jamie, he'll support you in everything that you do. He can fill you with more blessings than you can even imagine. He'll secure your future. And he'll take you to heaven one day. That's the main thing is Jesus Christ came and died for us. Not just us, you. Each individual that's in here today, Jesus Christ died for you. He did it just for you. And I ask you this morning, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, if you've never made a public commitment, I ask you this morning 
just to bow your heads with me and you can say this little prayer. Just bow your heads this morning. Say, God, just come into my heart. I know you're our Lord and Savior, and I just invite you into my heart this morning. Father, I know that I've done wrong, but you took care of all of it. And Father, I know that if I accept you as my personal Savior, that I will find an eternity, a home in heaven. Nothing like is what's here on earth. So, Father, I ask you now to come into my heart. Jesus said, my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. The good shepherd sacrifices his life for the sheep. And, Father, we know that we are those sheep, and we just thank you for it. Father, we thank you for Jamie and his testimony this morning. Be with us, guide us, and direct us in everything we say, do, and think. Let it bring glory and honor to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to ask you this morning if you have felt Jesus talk to you, if you felt him come into your heart. This altar is open this morning as we sing our closing song. And I just ask you to come up if you've never given your life to Jesus. But not only that. If you've just got something on your heart and you need to just come here and pray. Uh, even if you're a visitor this morning, you come here to pray. But I tell you, like I tell my other people, if you bring it here, you can't take it home with you. You've got to leave it here. Leave it right here. So let's take our hymn books and turn to page 580. 580, your burdens were lifted at Calvary. And definitely they were. Let's all stand and sing. <clears throat> 